Luke chapter 1, verse 33. So go ahead. Yes, I can use this one. This. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the time we have to fellowship with your word. Lord, we ask that your word will do us good. Your word will be a blessing unto us. That your word will heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, set captives free, save souls, transform lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your word will do miracles. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now we are in this season of the Lord's reigns. And we are somehow we are very, very intentional as God led us to tag this season, the Lord reigns. And this is not the first one. This is our 15th edition of the Lord reigns. We started in 2009. Hallelujah. And we've had amazing testimonies. We've had our uh, global family joining from across Nigeria, Ghana, Canada, the USA, Kenya, Uganda, our global Estonia, they're all part of this. So you are not doing it alone. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Now, quickly, what happens when God reigns in your life? What happens? Of course, we are in the season of extraordinary testimonies. Amazing things will happen. Amen. Amen. When God chooses to reign in your life, you have wonderful things. Number one, your ass head will float again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm purposeful for using that phrase. Your ass head, whatever you've lost before, will come back to life. Amen. We saw the case of Job in Job 42, verse 10, where everything will tumble. All that was lost, he got it back. When God reigns, what happened? Number one, your axe head will float again. Second Kings, the six, chapter six, verse one to seven. Second Kings, chapter six, verse one to seven. In the case of the sons of the prophets, knowing that where they are, where they were occupying, like we are now, was getting too small. They urged the man of God, the prophet, Elisha, that let's go and get a bigger place, but won't allow you to do it alone. Let's go and cut roots and build a bigger, a bigger synagogue, hallelujah, a bigger cathedral. And there they went, and God reigned when they had an incident of the axe head falling. When God reigns in your life, your axe head will float again. Whatever you've lost, God will restore it in the name of Jesus. Number two, number two, when God reigns in your life, what happened? Number two, be ready for strange and extraordinary demonstrations of the power of God. When God begins to reign in your life, be ready for strange and extraordinary demonstration of the power of God. Even you cannot contain it. Amen. When God begins to reign in your life, amazing things will begin to happen. Amazing things. Hallelujah. Things will begin to happen. You know, we wanted this gentleman, the guest that is coming, on, uh, on Saturday. We wanted him for the ovation. And we tried our best and we were so busy. But here I am taking my children, you know, the teens to London, Excel, for the flame, youth everywhere. You know, I, took, I drove them about six, seven of the group from Chapel of Grace. My daughter and uh, our teen friends and the Melody Obina and a couple of friends. And just at the car park, as I parked at the Excel, there was all of them nowhere. Also parking. Hallelujah. That's our God reigns. Making things that where you struggle, the person you need will just show up. Hallelujah. 
I don't need to go through any agents again. You, you won't go through agents again. Very soon you get the direct line to that in prayer. Amen. I said, very soon you have the direct line Amen. to that in prayer. Amen. And your prayer will just say, Yes, I saw your CV. I you this. And you say, Yeah, this is me. Hallelujah. And you ask him, What am I doing for the interview? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So very soon, you have a direct line. Amen. A direct line. Be ready for strange and extraordinary occurrences. Hey Amen. I know how difficult it is to get this artist. Difficult. But here I am. Here we are as a church. Being favored. Being favored. Acts 13, 9. Acts 13. Read it from verse 9. If I'm right. Acts 13. From verse 9. Yes. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him. Verse 10, and said, O oh, fool of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, we do not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord. And now, Indeed, the arm of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind. And that devil was made blind. Be ready for strange demonstration of God's power. Amen. I said, be ready for strange demonstration of what? God's power. That devil that has held you captive. We let you go. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In this season, He will let you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will let you go. Amen. He will testify. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, just look at somebody. Tell the person congratulations Amen. for the new job. Acts 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
at Pentecost, Peter became the center of the church. You will stand out of the crowd in the name of Jesus. I said you will stand out of the crowd in the name of Jesus. You know, I was traveling with uh, one of our, young, our pastors, our, our younger pastors. He was driving me and he asked me why we were going to London last, last week. And he said, Pastor Apple, why is it that you mingle with the high and you also mingle with the low? How do you do it? You, the high respects you so much. That means our big pastors, the big pastors, you, you mingle with them and you are with us also all over the place and you just chill out. He just wanted to know, how, how are you doing it? First, and I said, well, am I doing it? I don't know. But you will stand out. You will stand out. In the name of Jesus. You will stand out. I will stop there. You will stand out. Hebrews 1 verse 9. Hebrews 1 verse 9. The Bible says, you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. I hate lawlessness. I hate zigzagness. That's the word. <laughs> Amen. I hate zigzagness, lawlessness. You have what? Loved what? Righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Hallelujah. May you be outstanding. May you be outstanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, when God reigns, what happens? There will be joy inexpressible joy unstoppable hallelujah joy everlasting when God begins to reign just like I'm joyful you will express joy you know our, our, our brother Pastor Ola had his PhD you know on hey 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 Woo! it's not Dr. Ola Hey! Rise up! <laughs> Introducing to you the newest doctor in Chapel of Grace. Doctor. All that okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. When God reigns, amazing things happen. He sent me the video and all the supervisors were saying, Congratulations. I can play it here if I can. Amen. We no time for that. Amen. Very soon you will hear congratulations in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what happens when God is reigning. Why must it happen in the season of the Lord reigns? Amen. Why must it happen what? In the season of what? How dare you fail when God is reigning? Hey! It is an error. That means all that we are doing is for what? That we are saying is what? It's wasted. When God says, I want to reign, and you are failing. Come on. You must reign. Tap somebody, you must reign. Say, I reign in my career, in my marriage, in my workplace. I reign. I dominate. I rule. I conquer. I subdue. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You reign. You reign. Bold. Bold. You know you can be bold even when, when they ask you questions that you don't know. You can still be bold. Amen. When they put in a tight corner, you can be bold and threaten the person. Amen. <laughs> and claim that you are right. And get out of it. Nothing will happen. Amen. You will intimidate the person. Hallelujah. After, after all, you can say, you can repent later. <laughs> Amen. When you are in some tight corners, when you are in some tight corners. No, 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 no. no. If, you, if you know where I came from. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, you will reign. I said, you will reign. You will stand out in the name of Jesus with joy. Inexpressible. Acts 8 verse 5 to 8. 
Acts 8 verse 5 to 8, Philip went to a city, Samaria, a city that they denied Jesus from coming in. You know, Jesus, you know, he went to Samaria. He couldn't enter. He has to be at the outskirts. And he met a woman. The woman has to go in and bring the people to the outskirts for him to preach to. But Philip went there. There was a sorcerer. There was a god of the land that, that can cut off your neck if you dare preach Jesus. But Philip went and he got there after he had preached, after he had done miracles. Hallelujah. Acts 8 verse 8, the Bible says, there was great joy in that city. Joy inexpressible. Whereby even the sorcerer came and said, how can I buy this your power? Can I exchange it with money? How much does this cost? They will come and ask for your power. And you will tell them not. You will tell them not the secret. You will point them to Jesus. Shout glory. Shout glory. Hallelujah. Woo! 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 Amen. There was great joy in that city. Joy inexpressible. You know, in Isaiah 51, verse 11, Isaiah 51 verse 11, the Bible says, the ransomed of the Lord will come back to Zion with joy inexpressible, joy everlasting. It will come with dancing, with singing, that there will be no more weeping, no more sorrowing, no more sighing. Hallelujah. No more weeping. You've cried enough. You will cry no more. I said you will cry no more. In the name of Jesus, for the rest of this year, you will express joy. You will testify of the goodness of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Number five, quickly. When the Lord reigns, sinners will be convicted. Hallelujah. Sinners, what? Will be convicted. And that's why it's dangerous in a season like this, to continue sinning. Amen. It is dangerous in seasons like this to continue doing those things that you think that no one will know. God will expose you. Hallelujah. The Lord will expose you. And that's why you must get your act right today. Hallelujah. You no, know, years ago, God should we are in seasons like this and God showed to Pastor Andrea, one of our young girls in the choir, pregnant. Amen. Pregnant. God showed to her. And Pastor Andrea told me. And she said, honey, this girl in the choir is pregnant. She's not married. Okay. Pregnant. God showed to you. Yeah. So now I have to Walk it out as a pastor. Amen. So came to church. We danced. Rejoice. After rejoicing, sister, come to the office. Amen. Sister came to the office. And I said, sister, no, because people are very, very what? They are very, very, is it hyper? Or what's the word? What's the word? They are, you, you, you can't go into people's space. They will say, pastor, this is where your, your power hands, eh? That's mine. So I came, I called her. I said, but I have to get the church right. Amen? God is reigning now. Then we can't, we can't condone lawlessness. I said, sister, God said, God said you are pregnant. It's not me. It's not Pastor Andra. I didn't mention anybody's name. But God what? Said, you are pregnant. Tell me the truth. And shame the devil. Hallelujah. She collapsed. She collapsed in the office. I said, sister, it's not a collapsing matter. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wake up so that we can. <laughs> Amen. No, let's. Wake up. <laughs> no, you collapse, you get up. No, it's time to. It's not time to collapse. Tell somebody, it's not time to collapse. Tell the person, wake up. I say the truth. And the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. But she said, pastor, you are right. You are right. Uh, my, a young man that wanted me, wanted, who well, is uh, eyeing me or whatever, came over to Bradford. He booked an hotel. 
and uh, and uh, I went there and uh, he said he likes me and uh, it is well. Hallelujah. I said, what? Then what happened? He held my hand. It is well. And then what? He tried to, it is well. And, and I tried to, and I ran. And he ran. He ran out. You ran out. He said, yes, I ran out. It is well. I said, let it be that you ran out. Because since the revelation, we've been praying for you. Amen? Since the revelation, we've been praying for you. And that's why you cannot hide anything. Amen? You can't what? Hide. I've said it before. It's not by. I've said it before. Whatever you do, God will show it to us. All I need to do is to take your name. Wake up midnight till 6 a.m. Lord, show me this person. It's simple. It's simple. It's, it's not special as per Pastor Apo, even you as a father, mother. God must show you your family. Whatever happens in your family, you have, you have the spiritual authority to know. It's only you that ignored it, that things would happen. And you say, oh, God showed it to me this way. I was too beclouded with so many. I was distracted. Whatever happens in your family, as the spiritual head, you must know. You should know. It's you that is getting distracted. If I pick up your name from evening, if I'm from, from midnight to 6 a.m., if I doze up one minute, it will show me the real thing. Hallelujah. And that's why you cannot continue doing whatever that is not right. Hallelujah. Let's rise up. I have two more points, but time will not permit me. Go ahead and just talk to God. Give him praise. Because God must reign. Amen. And things will be right. You will testify in the name of Jesus. You will testify. I want you this, 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 this afternoon to just focus on God. Focus on the areas that you need God to intervene. Focus on the areas that you need Him to say, my daughter, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Surrender to him in that story of the Acts, you know, in Acts, Acts 8. That sorcerer, by the time he saw the power of God, he came surrendering. Acts 8 verse 19. He surrendered. Hallelujah. He surrendered. I mean, he surrendered. He became a child of God. Hallelujah. 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 My prayer is that you will surrender today, whatever that has been holding you back. You know? You will today know or recognize that God is supreme in the name of Jesus.